praise the name of Jesus. So, Brother Fred, I'll turn it over okay. to you. The title of the message tonight is Change Your Life. You know, a lot of the messages that we have looked at uh, in the past relate to uh, godly principles and and uh, we should follow different things and how to pray and how to uh, believe God and apply our faith. So a lot of different things. But tonight is an end result that all of the things that we study, the things that we do about the Lord, all of that should lead to a change in our life. And, and I want to start by thinking about Adam. Adam, uh, when he was created, he, Adam and Eve, and and uh, they were in the Garden of, uh, of Eden, and, and uh, they were immersed in the glory of God and in the mm -hmm. presence of God. And then uh, they never had any children during that time. And then they rebelled. And so Adam, let's look at, let's think about it. Adam rebelled. And then they began having children. And so we are all the descendants of Adam. We're all the descendants of the rebel. And so when we are born on this earth, uh, we all have the Adam nature of the first Adam, uh, which was a rebellious nature. So there were was all kinds of problems with all of us. Uh, we're, uh, none of us are special in that regard. So we all uh, were born with the uh, Adam spirit. And then when we came to Jesus, we came to know him, we accepted him, our spirit was born again. So we were first, uh, we had the nature of Adam, the rebel, and then when we came to Jesus, uh, we our spirit was born again within us. Now, that didn't change our bodies. It didn't change our attitude. It didn't change our thinking, our intellect. It didn't change a lot of those things. And so God began working with us. And of course, he began working with us even before we uh, accepted Jesus because he had to work with us and prepare us uh, so that we would accept Jesus. So he was drawing us even before we knew Jesus. Uh, the Father, by his Spirit, was drawing us uh, to him. And, and uh, after that, that's when all of these other changes begin to occur, all of the changes in our life. And so uh, we start in our journey with the Lord uh, when when our spirit becomes alive, that's when we become aware of him. Uh, and, and so we've accepted him now as our Lord and Savior. Uh, but now we have to change a lot of the other uh, parts of us. We have to change our thinking. We have to change our attitudes. We uh, have to change uh, our bodies and, and our behaviors. So it's only after our spirit is born again that we can actively uh, engage in change. And God's plan is to change each of us from a person with the spirit of Adam, the rebel, to the second Adam, to be conformed to the image and the last Adam, the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ. And so then we begin to change into the image of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's a marvelous uh, process and it's ongoing and it happens every day. That we, But we are the people driving it uh, as we yield to the Holy Spirit. And so I want to start here, and this is our first verse, and this is really the core of it, that we should be changing day by day mm -hmm. into the image of Jesus Christ. And the reason this message is so important, we need to be thinking, are we changing? If, if we're not changing, we're staying uh, in a stale uh, attitude and behavior, doing the same thing over and over again, then we're not being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. So let's mm -hmm. look at the first verse that I have for Sherry, and that's 2 Corinthians 3. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, from the King James Version. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, 
are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, so it says we're changing that we're being changed into the image of Jesus Christ. This is important for all of us. This is the end result of all the teaching that you've had all in the in your all your congregations, all the churches, and uh, uh, Bible studies. It's all aimed at us being changed. Hallelujah. And, and so the question today is: Are we being changed? And is it, it's an ongoing process. And I wanted to read, share you to read this same verse, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, but out of a different translation because it has this incredible phrase in it, ever increasing splendor. Mm, mm, and that's mm. what I want us to think about. This is an ever increasing splendor. And you might think, well, I haven't changed in the last 20 years. I, I'm exactly like I was. Well, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. It's supposed to be an ever increasing splendor. So read this verse, Sherry. Out yes, of out of the Phillips uh, translation. But all of us who are Christians have no veils on our faces, but reflect like mirrors the glory of the Lord. We are transfigured by the spirit of the Lord in ever increasing splendor into his own image. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Is that the way you view your life? You are being changed, ever increasing Think splendor, splendor. Mm -hmm. into the image of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So that's the point of this message tonight. And we want to uh, find out how to do it. How can we be changed? Well, that's where we're headed tonight. How can we be changed into this ever increasing splendor of the image of Jesus Christ? So we're not supposed to be today like we were January the 1st. We're not supposed to be like mm -hmm. we were July the 1st. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be ever increasing in splendor of the image of oh, Jesus Christ. You, it makes Lord. me want mm -hmm. to change. Yeah. And, and and I believe we all need to have that desire to change, to yes. let the Holy Spirit, Spirit change. change us. Okay, but now I'm going to look at two groups of people, uh, two broad categories, and these are characteristics of people who don't change. And these are people, and you might think, well, everybody's changing, and it just happens automatically. No, no. it's a process. And we're going to talk about that process. But first of all, I want to show you why people do not change. And so we're going to go over this passage, but we have two passages I want us to look at of people who do not change. But these are Christians. These include some of your friends. They're not changing, and you'll recognize that. Uh, and, and people even uh, in your surroundings and in your uh, people you come in contact with, many, many people are not changing, changing. not ever increasing splendor. Woo! Mm -hmm. But let's look mm -hmm. at it. Why do they, this first one, we'll look at why people do not change. Okay, okay. this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 through 5. And this is the New American Standard. For people will be lovers of their self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, slanderers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness. Okay, let's pause here for a minute. These are Christians. That they may be going to the same church that we go to or you go to. Uh, so they're Christians. So they're doing things that make them look like Christians on the outside, but they haven't changed. And, and so let's look at the last part of this verse. They have a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. Avoid such people as these. Woo! they haven't changed mm. because they've denied the power of the Holy Spirit to change them. Amen. This is why people do not change. They reject 
the power of the Holy Spirit to change them. And so there are multitudes of Christians in your cities and in your and where you work and all, and they call themselves Christians and they have accepted Jesus, mm -hmm. but they have not changed. They still have the nature of the rebel A Adam. Oh, wow. And because they have rejected the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to change them. Mm -hmm. We need to embrace the mm -hmm. power of the Holy Spirit to change us. Amen. Now, here's a second passage. And, and there's a lot of passages we, we could go to, but there's a second passage in Galatians. And this is going to tell us, this is going to tell us that what's the source of their not changing? Mm -hmm. what, what is the source mm -hmm. of it? And what are the consequences? Oh, wow. What are the consequences of not changing? Mm -hmm. So if we are like we were in January of this year, when we've refused to change, then there are consequences to that. So let's read these okay. verses. This is Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, out of the New American Standard. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are sexual immorality, impurity, indecent behavior, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. What's the source of staying the same, staying the same nature, keeping the same nature as all of these things or any of these things? You, it could just be one of these things. But what's the source of it? It's flesh. Yeah. It's our carnal thinking. It's a flesh yeah. and carnality. Okay. What are the consequences of not changing? Well, the consequences are we don't get to inherit the kingdom of God. Mm, mm, In other mm. words, we can't benefit from the kingdom of God. Now, That's what right. is the kingdom yeah. of God? It's the realm mm. of the Holy Spirit where miracles happen, where healings happen, where prosperity. So those are the benefits. But these people who do not change do not receive the benefits of God's kingdom. And so if we want to, if we want to receive the benefits, what are we going to have to do? And that's this next verse, which is Galatians 5, 24, I believe. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus must crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. Okay, so how do we enjoy the benefits of the kingdom, like prosperity, healing, sound mind? healing in our bodies. How do we and uh, how do we enjoy it? We have to crucify the flesh. See, there are two things that are going to hold you back from being changed. They're hindrances to you wanting to be changed, uh, to being changed. Two hindrances, and the first is flesh. That's all carnality. So flesh is going to keep you from changing. And so what are we going to have to do if we want to inherit the kingdom of God? We have to crucify the flesh. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, this is the, so here are the procedures of how can we change? Well, let's just, let's just talk for just a moment here. Let's define what we mean by crucify, crucify the flesh. Uh, do you nail yourself to a tree? Do you do you put nails in your hands and your feet? And do you put a, a thorn of a crown of thorns on your head? Do you whip yourself like uh, many of the the religious uh, people do uh, in this day and time in Mexico? Uh, you you see these people that have uh, stripes upon their their own backs because they whip themselves. You know, what What do we mean by, by crucifying the flesh? 
And what we mean by that is laying yourself on the altar, presenting yourself to Jesus every day, obeying the word of God. And so we present ourselves a living sacrifice unto God. We present our minds. We say, Lord, take my mind. Let my mind be on you today. We say, Lord, take my body. Uh, let it be whole. Let it be healed. Uh, I present it to you. That's that's crucifying uh, the flesh. And so we, we do it through the spirit, by the spirit. Um, so I just wanted to. That's uh, excellent. excellent. Yeah. So we want to follow the Holy Spirit. So how are we going to change? By following the Holy Spirit. So we ask the Lord what he wants us to do today, uh, where he wants us to go, who he wants us to interact with. Well, what are we supposed to do today? When we follow the spirit, see, now our flesh is going to want to do fleshly things, carnal things, uh, things to enjoy pleasures uh, more than the pleasures of God, more, okay, so the pleasures of this world. And so if we're doing those kinds of things that uh, fleshly kinds of things, then uh, we're not following the spirit. But if we're following the spirit, we're going to lay down our will and take up God's mm -hmm. will and do what mm -hmm. he wants and not what we want, okay? Oh, yeah. we it, It's like Jesus in the, in the garden. He said, not my will, Father, but your will. And that's what we have to, that's crucifying the flesh when we say, not my will today, but your will, Father. What do you want me to do today? Uh, and it's not about me seeking the worldly pleasures. It's not about getting so absorbed uh, in the day-to-day -day activities, uh, but that I'm going to follow the Lord and do what the Lord wants to do. So that's how mm -hmm. we crucify the flesh. Okay, but I said there are really two types of hindrances, and the one is flesh, okay, and the other one are unclean or evil spirits, evil spirits, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you you might say, well, in the United States or in the Western world, we, we just don't really deal with spirits. Well, let me just tell you how the Bible sees it. Um, in the Bible, if you look through there, you'll find a lot of references uh, to evil spirits. And the even the evil spirits that were mentioned in the Old Testament, you know, they didn't die. That Those demons didn't die. They, they still exist. And they are still tormenting people. And I'll give you this example. Isaiah uh, 61, verse 3, he says, uh, he gives us beauty, beauty for ashes, ashes, the oil of joy, joy for mourning, the garment of praise for, for the spirit, spirit of, of heaviness. heaviness. Okay, that's an evil spirit. And so if you've had a spirit of heaviness, if you've had oppression or depression uh, coming upon you or anxiety, if you've had these kinds of things come upon you, then the way to get out of that is Joel 2, verse 32, says, those who call upon the name of the, the Lord, Lord shall, shall be, be delivered, yeah. shall be delivered. And so if demonic spirits are harassing you, uh, then we're going to have to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus gave us authority and power to cast out demons. So we can stop demonic attacks. And you and, and, okay, let me let me just okay. Um, okay. Let me just explain a little bit more here. Uh, because I see some of your, your thought patterns. Uh, a Christian, someone who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, cannot be possessed of a devil. They cannot be taken over by an evil spirit. Because the evil spirit cannot uh, step over the bloodline. Into the spirit. Into the spirit realm. Into the spirit man. Into the spirit man. Into your spirit. And so, but the evil spirits can bring torment to believers. They can bring harassment. They can cause individuals to have anxiety, to worry, uh, to doubt, uh, to be condemned. Uh, those are things that that are in the, the carnal realm, the fleshly realm, 
and the evil spirit can attack uh, the, the fleshly realm. See, the evil spirit does not have a body, but he does have a voice. He has words. And when he puts words into your mind, so you can't see him with your natural eye, but when he puts words into your uh, mind, he can cause you to fear. He can cause you to have oppression or depression. Uh, okay, so it's a spirit of heaviness. And how are we delivered from a spirit of heaviness? Call on the name of the Lord Jesus yeah, Christ. And put on the garment of praise. But, and, but you have to recognize that it's there. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to give you just some examples. Let's say and try to distinguish between uh, a flesh, a fleshly desire versus a demonic uh, uh, oppression to over a person. Okay, because those are the two types of hindrances. We need to recognize them. Now, let's say a person uh, goes and gets drunk. Okay, then that person decides not to drink to get drunk again. Okay. That was flesh. Flesh caused that person, their flesh, their own flesh, not somebody else, but their own flesh caused them to get drunk. Uh, and, and, and we're, you know, it says we're not supposed to be drunken, but we'd be filled with the spirit, okay? But now if a person gets drunk and, and, and becomes an alcoholic, see, that's when, that, when the demonic spirits come in there and because they're compelling and, and uh, uh, enslaving people to drugs right. or to alcohol. And so then you, it, it may start out with a flesh, with a fleshly desire, a fleshly lust. And so you may be able to control it there, uh, but you cannot control your flesh with your flesh. Mm -hmm. You have to... It, Invite the spirit to show you uh, what the problem is and how to overcome it. It's by the spirit that you overcome the flesh. You don't overcome your flesh with the flesh. But if you continue to do a behavior, then the, that's when the evil spirits come in and begin to harass you and torment you and drive you into areas. So most people who are... Uh, have addictions. See, most people with addictions, their demonic influences in those people, and they're driving them there. And you might think, well, it just doesn't exist. And but now let me t give you examples. Yesterday, mm -hmm. I dealt with a woman who was dealing with demonic spirits. Yes. And yesterday, Sherry dealt with uh, a, a man and woman who were dealing with demonic spirits. Now, these were not just simple uh, influences of demons. These were l destroying death, uh, mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. death to people. And so it goes on all the time, all the time. And like I said, yesterday we were dealing, and I'll just give you these two examples that we dealt with, I, where I dealt with and counseled a woman and her son, who was in his mid-30s, she said uh, she went and visited him for a week, and uh, sometimes he'd be screaming and yelling at her and cussing her, and, and, he, and she said when that happened, his eyes turned, and they looked like snake eyes, black snake eyes, and then when the evil spirit uh, calmed down, then she could see her son's eyes, and then she, she could ask him, oh, can I hug you, and he would let her hug him, and she said he put his head on her shoulder like he was just a little baby uh, son. But that was the difference between that the demon and and that demon wants to kill that, uh, that man. Yeah, I mean. and, and so what we're talking about tonight is not about possessions, but we're just talking about influence uh, of uh, uh, evil spirits. Now, the second one that Sherry was uh, dealt with and counseled, uh, that there was a couple that came and called her because they were dealing with a man who had a spirit of death upon him. And she told them to go and cast the spirit of death off of him. She was the one that discerned what it was. They knew the problem, but they didn't know what it was. And she said, it's the spirit of death. Go uh, cast it off of him or it's going to kill him. Okay, so these are, 
issues that people deal with every day of their life. Right. And when we came to Jesus, mm -hmm. we had the nature of Adam. And we continue to have the nature of Adam until we are changed by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Day by day, we're being changed from glory to glory. It's an ongoing process. If you said, well, I haven't changed in the last 10 years, uh, you, you need to check up on yourself because we need to be changing day by day, ever increasing splendor Hallelujah. of the image of Jesus Christ. Mm, that's a good scripture. Now, I want to give you, let's say, six uh, things about unclean spirits, and these are all from the, uh, from the Bible, a and uh, you, might, you might say, well, that happened uh, 2,000 years ago, but it goes on every day. Because like I said, those spirits that were there in the Old Testament, they're still here. And the spirits that were- the, They're still on the earth. They're because they the never earth. destroyed. They were never destroyed. They never died. Uh, what's going to happen when people come in contact with them, they have to cast them out. Okay. So they're still around and they're going, they don't have bodies. You can't see them with your natural eye, but they have words and they can plant words in anyone's mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I have some scriptures I want us to go over, but basically six things, uh, six things that that I think are very important. And the first one, and, but this is just, just uh, a taste of what kind of evil spirits that we have to deal with. The first one are seducing uh, spirits, mm -hmm. seducing spirits. And this is found in... Uh, in Timothy, and I want to share to read this verse. Okay. First Timothy um, 4 1. 4 1, is it? Yeah. First Timothy 4 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later, latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay. Now you might say, well, yeah, but that happened 2,000 years ago. But what did the scripture say? In the latter times. In right now. Th that's going on now. Yeah. A and uh, uh, one of our good friends encountered somebody uh, just a few days ago. He had been a pastor. And now he's uh, rejecting. She came. He came up to her table. She was at the coffee shop. And uh, this man came up to her and uh, debated uh, whether the Bible was even true. He told her that it wasn't true. And he had been a pastor in this city of a, he was a pastor of a congregation and he has given uh, heed to seducing spirits. Right. Now he's confused. Uh, and so that's going on. And it says in the latter days, that's the days we're living in. Okay, so the first uh, type of uh, spirit I want to talk about is a, a seducing spirit. Uh, the next is a tormenting spirit. And this comes from Matthew 18. And, and people who do not forgive, uh, mm, you mm, know, they're going to be turned mm. over to the tormentors. Who are the tormentors? No way. They're evil spirits. Now, when do these tormentors, when do they bother you? Well, they, they may bother you in the night. They, they're going to just torment you and say, oh, you just don't have enough money. You don't, you don't, uh, things are not going right. Your boss is not treating you right. Your wife's not treating you right. Your husband's not treating you right. That's a that's a tormenting spirit, a tormenting spirit. Well, and let me uh, also uh, share this. I had uh, a lady from Texas call me, and she she had been having all of these dreams, and and she wanted me to interpret uh, the dreams, and she was thinking that all of these dreams were from the Lord. And as I spoke with her, as I listened to her, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, these dreams were not from me. They were tormenting spirits. Tormenting spirits. And Tormenta, when, when did you talk to her? About, about two, two days ago. Two days ago. See, this is going on all the time. People don't realize that there are unclean, evil spirits uh, all around, okay? Right. Now, there's another one I want to talk about. This is number three, and that is enslaving spirits. And so I want you to read this verse because this says we were all there. 
uh, in Galatians 4, verse 3. Three. And this is the good news translation. In the same way, we too were slaves of the ruling spirits of the universe before we reached spiritual maturity. Okay, so we were all there. We were all enslaved by these evil spirits because they were putting thoughts in our mind. They were tormenting us. And this is where the addictions come from. These are where uh, people who are mm -hmm. addicted they are enslaved to that stuff. Right. I talked to a woman yesterday. She knew she needed to give up cigarettes because it was a uh, hindrance to her marriage. Her husband did not like her uh, smoking. And she said she knew that, but she wasn't going to give up smoking uh, because that's her fallback position. She, she would go back to cigarettes whenever she was uncomfortable about an issue. It's like... <laughs> People going back to heroin or cocaine. Uh, okay, so why did she do that? Well, it's because the evil spirits are compelling her, enslaving her. her to cigarettes, even though it's destroying her marriage and her spiritual life. It's enslaving her, just like that verse said. And, and you might say, well, that's just that woman. But that scripture said we, that's mm -hmm. all of us, have been enslaved by these evil spirits well let me give another example and this is our oldest son who is now free and in serving the lord but when he was in addiction those drugs were so enslaving that he would not go on trips with us because he didn't want to leave uh where his supplier was and and so it was enslaving to him. It enslaved him uh, to the point of not being able to hold a job, uh, not being able to uh, care and take care of his children. Uh, and so we know about the enslavement. Okay. okay. Now here's the fourth one that I want to talk about. I'm just going to give you six different examples, but this uh, the fourth one is unclean spirits. You know, Jesus dealt with a lot of unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. And uh, it said, if you cast them out, um, then they they go and they wander in, in uh, dry places. And if you don't prepare, they're going to try to come back against you. Mm -hmm. That's against everybody. Unclean spirits. This is, these are Jesus's words. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to come back. And when they come back, they always gang up. They get a gang with them mm -hmm. and they come and they're going to be stronger when they come back. So you can deal with them the first time, but you've got to get your heart and mind set uh, on dealing with these things. Uh, and, and so we need to realize there are unclean spirits. Now, if, if you feel like you've done something and it's made you unclean, it may be a spirit. It may have been an unclean spirit. If you've had some uh, images have come into your mind, or you've had thoughts that have come into your mind and it's caused you to think that you were unclean. It comes from the unclean spirits. Right. And, and so we need to recognize that. That's the purpose of this message is to recognize where your attacks are coming against you because what? You're supposed to be changed in an ever increasing splendor of the image of Jesus Christ. And, and do you feel like you're there? I don't feel like I'm there yet, but that's where I want to be. That's where I want Hallelujah. to be. Amen. Ever increasing splendor of the image of Jesus Christ. Now, here's the fifth example I want to give you, and that is sickness, tiredness, uh, uh, death. All of those things come from unclean spirits because Acts 10 verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all, all that were oppressed of the devil. So where does sickness come from? The devil. Where does tiredness come from? You, you know, it's one thing you could go out there in the fields and work and, and you'd be tired. That's okay. But, but if you're sitting at home and you're tired all the time, that's a demonic spirit right. attack against you. Uh, or if you go to the doctor and they say, well, you've got cancer, or you've got heart problems, you're going to die. I mean, that's from demonic spirits because Jesus said in John 10, 10, I, the thief comes to steal, kill, kill and, and destroy. destroy. Kill. Do you see that? Who comes to kill? 
It's the devil that comes to kill. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Do you have that abundant life? And the, in order for us to have that abundant life, we have to be changed ever increasing splendor of the image of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is an important message. Yeah. I hope you I hope you'll take heed to it. Now that my sixth and final example of unclean unclean and evil spirits is this the spirit of slumber. And uh, some people have a spirit of slumber. And this is what the Lord mm -hmm. showed me. The spirit of slumber can cause you to sleep at inappropriate times. Uh, and some people are driving down the road and they go to sleep and, and their car veers off and they may have an accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can have slum or mm -hmm. people can be reading their Bible and for a couple of minutes and all of a sudden they get sleepy and, they, and they're so sleepy they can't, uh, they can't read the Bible or maybe they want to get up in the morning and, and pray right. and maybe they get so sleepy they can't do that. Uh, maybe they want to worship the Lord, but they get to, that's the spirit of slumber uh, that's trying to put them to asleep uh, when they shouldn't be asleep. And, and But the spirit of slumber can do this as well. It can cause you to stay up and not sleep when you should. Mm -hmm. it, it just really harasses you and, and causes you to sleep when you shouldn't sleep and to be awake when you should be sleeping. That's, That's the spirit right. of slumber. That's right. Now, the reason this is so important to me is that if you remember at the first of the year, I talked about resolutions and I said, let us rest. Let us enter into rest. That was one of our resolutions. Another one was let us help other people rest. So I'm telling you this tonight so that you will know that if you cannot sleep when you need to sleep, it may be a spirit of slumber. And if you are trying to serve the Lord and worship the Lord and you get sleepy and are not able to do it, it's a spirit of slumber. So we need to rest. Let's enter into rest. Let's have other people enter into rest. Let them realize that there's a spirit of slumber that tries to disrupt their sleep mm -hmm. and their rest. Okay. Now, I've talked about all of these things. There's some things that come from flesh, and there's some things that come from evil spirits that keep us unchanged, that keep us from being able to change. Okay, so let's see how to deal with these two things if it comes from flesh. And so if we get angry, uh, and then we don't get angry, then we're not going to get angry again. See, that's flesh. Mm -hmm. Anger comes from flesh. But if we blow up and we begin to scream at our spouse or our children and, and, we, and we're angry out of our control, it's an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm showing you some fleshly things, some evil spirit kinds of things that keep us the way we were uh, with the spirit, with the Adam. Uh, that we had the nature of Adam before it keeps we came us in rebellion and we don't want that and so some some uh things that just happen once or twice that 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 may be from your flesh anger or, or, or getting drunk once or smoking a cigarette once but then if you get addicted to those kinds of things you get addicted to pornography uh, and you're driven into those areas or driven into the sexual immorality or adultery or fornication. You're driven into those areas. That can be from an evil spirit. Amen. Amen. So I want you to know this can be a liberating message. This is a Hallelujah. change that we can be changed. And that's what we ought to all desire because that's what the scripture said. And then the Holy Spirit is going to have to help us change. We do not want to stay the way we were because we do not inherit the kingdom of God. We do not receive the benefits of prosperity. We do not receive the benefits of healing. We do not receive the, it says we do not inherit the kingdom. We do not walk in the benefits of God's kingdom, the supernatural realm of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Amen. is an important message. It's touched my life. Uh, we help uh, counsel people uh, all over the world that they, that because they're coming to us because they haven't heard about, they haven't known 
uh, what has been harassing them. They didn't know that they were being tormented by tormenting spirits. They didn't know that unclean spirits were having an influence on them because evil spirits have words, but they don't have body. And that's the reason they can sneak up on you and put words in your thinking and, and cause you, and they'll be right there. See, there's a familiar spirit. There are familiar spirits that work through your family. Yeah, they, they and, know your weakness. They know what your weakness is, and they're right there offering whatever that weakness is. And so if it's pornography, they're right there uh, driving you to pornography. If it's, if it's cigarettes, they're right there driving the familiar spirits. They're there driving you in those directions. If you're, if you're uh, prone to have oppression or, or, or fear, I mean, those familiar spirits are there attacking you all the time, trying to put those thoughts in. Well, it, uh, it's fearful. I'm not going to have enough money. I'm not my spouse is not going to be faithful. My children are not going to serve the Lord. That's fear. See, and Jesus Christ did not give us a spirit of fear, fear. a spirit of fear. He didn't come from Jesus, but he's given us a spirit of power and a spirit of love, love and a spirit of a sound, sound mind. mind. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you.